human beings want freedom? Do you want to be free? Is it a silly question? Let's suppose that there is someone looking after us. He would demand that we work and treat us like robotic slaves. However, he would give us three meals, provide us with safe lodging, and give us plenty of money. But if one day the person tells us, get out of this house, and kicks us out of the house without a penny in our pockets, what kind of choice would we make? Would we escape from this unjust tyranny and revel in our freedom? Or would we seek to go back to the master as an obedient servant? Eric Fromm contemplates this question through the issue of a person in an authoritarian nation in his book Escape from Freedom, published in 1941 during the heyday of Nazism and Fascism. In this episode, through the work of Eric Fromm, we will talk about the duplicity of human beings that desires freedom, yet nevertheless runs from it. Since the Middle Ages, the freedom of an individual man has made great advancements. The capitalist productivity and efficiency had liberated human beings from hunger, and reformation had allowed us to pave our own destiny, freedom from tyranny of the church. However, though it may be counterintuitive, rather than welcoming the freedom that we all supposedly have aspired to, it seems that we missed the security we once had under the rigid power structure of the Middle Ages. We want a sense of belonging, and we crave security. Instead of taking advantages of the freedom we to pursue what we want, we deride it by calling it solitude or loneliness. Why? Why do people run from individual freedom, and why do they run to security and servitude? Fromm argues that modern men from medieval ties was not free to build a meaningful life based on reason and love, hence sought new security and submission to a leader, race, or state. Fromm attempts to explain the heart of men that resist freedom and seek servitude by the concepts of necrophilia and biophilia. Necrophilia is a Freudian term that refers to love of death. Necro is a Greek word for corpse, and philia is that of love. Combined, it refers to the love of the inanimate. Because an organism is mortal and inanimate objects are immortal, human beings choose the undying objects that are lifeless. The reason why we give up on the freedom is because we have grown accustomed to this love of lifelessness, the love of death. On the other hand, bio in biophilia refers to life. Biophilia refers to an instinctive belief found in human beings which assert that, though my life may end at some day, life itself will go on after me. Biophilia is a desire to pass life on to the future, a desire unique to human beings. It speaks to the dignity of men that seeks to realize the freedom that awaits us tomorrow. So, they from argued that all we need to leave necrophilia behind and pursue biophilia is a change in personal choice by will? The answer is definitive no. We no longer live in a society where we can realize our freedom through personal choices. We cannot live apart from the society we find ourselves in. Thus, every freedom we can realize is realized within this social world that surrounds us. Fromm argues that both biophilia and necrophilia are inescapable realities of human life. It is the reason why the whole society should focus on letting biophilia blossom in a productive way. If we attempt to completely castrate necrophilia, it may in fact lead us to run for religious salvation. Philia and death are not adversaries that each person can take on by himself or herself. If society tries to conceal the inescapable reality of death, the violence within us will not be able to find an outlet, and our death drive can erupt in a large-scale catastrophe like a world war. When we can understand biophilia and necrophilia as two sides of all human beings, we may be able to find a way to create a world that is free in the true sense of the word. Let's think about a problem that we are facing today, the issue of low birth rate. Welcoming the birth of a new child is the ultimate example of biophilia. However, it involves a tremendous amount of pain in the mother. If the society blames the woman for their reluctance to help children and do not compensate for the sacrifice they need to make for their love of life, their desire to give birth to new babies would inevitably wane. Only when the pain of giving birth is transformed in into an honorable sacrifice by recognition and compensation by the society can the mothers of the world no longer fear giving birth to the second and third child. It is not only our opinions but the dominant paradigm of the world that needs to change in order to attain such freedom to let biophilia realize itself. In other words, freedom is not a problem that each one can solve on their own, but it is something that we must work together to achieve. Fromm argues that what such change can ultimately achieve is the affluent society, society that represents ideal freedom, what the world must strive for. Let's hear what he had to say about it. The goal of life is to completely immerse ourselves in life. It is to be completely alive and awake, to realize the fact that we are precious beings yet no more precious than an insect or a patch of grass, to love life yet at the same time accept the reality of death, to recognize the uncertainties of great problems of life yet trust our thoughts and emotions, to be able to stand on our two feet yet to be one with the loved ones and all the living things in the world, follow the voice of conscience that reaches out to us yet not to despise ourselves when we do not follow the command of these voices. In order for us to choose freedom without hesitation, our society must strive for affluence within which our love for life would blossom. Thus, our just society will respect our biophilia and help us to commit ourselves to tasks that make us celebrate our own lives. A human being cannot be content with just material affluence, nor can he or she be satisfied with mere security. The human instinct to escape from the death drive and revel in love of life is inherent in us. We see this every day when we watch children playing under the sun. It belongs to everyone. We all have the inner longing to let our biophilia blossom. To repeat, Freedom is the responsibility of all of us. To achieve true freedom, we must revel in the grandeur of nature, alongside the eruption of life that is children. 
I hope your day is filled with such love of life. So, until next time, bye. Paper Renaissance.